Okay, let's start again. Happy holidays and good morning to you. Right? Look at, there's no such thing as randomness. We know that everything is synchronistic. So we want to just think about the unity that's taking place in the cosmos as a sign for us. Right? And I'm not really going to get into it, but whatever background you are, whether it's Passover or Easter, let's just understand we're all one. If we go back into it, every religion or originates from where? From the Creator. So since we all come from the Creator, let's just understand we're all in it for brotherly love, unity, peace, harmony, and, and what else? Happiness. What else? Bliss. What else? Oneness. Come on. Okay, health, that's great. Okay, right? We all want all the blessings for everyone, and that's what we're here on Sundays for, to help shift our consciousness. To not only understand that we have it already, but that's not enough for us, to make it actually manifest, as we're going to deal with today. So how we start every Sunday is with an affirmation. We want to keep putting in our brain the truth. Because sadly, over the millennium, We've put a lot of negativity. I just shared in one of the, it's a little loud, I think. I just shared with one of the classes, how many of you ever heard the idea of if you walk outside with wet hair, you'll catch a cold? <laughs> right? How many of you ever walked outside with wet hair and not caught a cold? Probably more times than not, right? But that's been injected in our brain so many times that still to this day, even after 30 years of Kabbalah, I must admit, that if I have wet hair and I'm about to walk out, it's gotten better, but for at least that one microsecond, I think, oh, I'm like, come on, and then I walk out. So we're here to change our way of thinking, and that's why we start with this affirmation to shift our consciousness. Because the more we will inject the truth and the truth and the truth and the truth and the truth, then the more we'll be able to live it. And once we live the truth, what do you think the Creator gave every human being on earth? Pain and suffering, chaos and challenges, or love, peace, and all the blessings. Love, peace, and all the blessings. So let's get started. We say together our affirmation. Consciousness is everything. I raise my consciousness today to see the miracles and wonders of life. I commit myself to behave with greater love, compassion, and kindness towards all human beings. And let's get started with the best people we have around us right now. Please stand up and hug each other. Okay, now we have all our friends on Facebook from around the world, so let's greet them. Hello, welcome. Let them hear you louder. They think there's only two of you here. Yeah, they got to hear you all over the world. I got people, I didn't even bring my list today. I figured we'd just say hello. Next week I'll go back to my list. But I was getting people, what's the latest? I have another person from Germany. I have somebody from Finland. Um, where was that one country? I can't even say the, practically the name. Anyway, it's one of those Kestans. So someone wrote me and said they're watching now. A new person from Poland also watching. So we are reaching the world, and it's thanks to you what you inject into this and just... You know, when you put it on your Facebook page, you have no idea where it goes. I have no idea how these people find us, but they find us. Because we put the energy in here, we have the desire to embrace the entire world. So the world's coming along. How many people are looking for what we have here? If you really think about it. I mean, what do we talk about here? Peace, love, unity, oneness. Right? How to overcome the negativity and how to take responsibility for our lives. What could be harmful? You thinking? Nothing, right? But what could be the benefit? Everything. Peace on earth. That's what we're talking about. You must be so excited. I don't know what's going on. We have Bibi and Tom are back to sing, right? So we want to hear them, and then we'll get into it. Um, good morning. I'm Bibi Saboya. Today, oh, I want to thank Haim and Batya and the Kabbalah Center for having me again. Um, today, I'm going to sing The Good Side by Troy Sivan. Um, I decided I'm singing this song today because last week I had great expe expectations about something that didn't happen. Um, but there's a good side for everything. I 
I've got the good side of things Left you with both of the rings My fingers dance and sweet in the breeze The change in the wind took you down to your knees I've got the good side of you Sent it out into the boat The people dance to the sounds of your heart The world sing along to it fall it apart And I sympathize And I recognize And baby I apologize That I've got the good side side of things, the good side of things. The good side of things. I've got the good side of life. Travel the universe twice. didn't call cause it wouldn't be fair then i've got the good side of new found arms to fall right into i know how it looked it wasn't the plan but someday i hope that you understand that i sympathize Okay, now we'll go on. Now I've got the good side of things. So thank uh, Bibi and Tom, who enjoyed it. So we go back to the idea, you know, that people think just attending a place of worship is enough for their spiritual growth, because they've been places many, many, many years. But you and I who are here in the center, we understand that spiritual growth doesn't come easy. If you don't put effort into it, nothing grows, like anything else in life. We have to put effort for our spiritual growth, but then it's also important to understand what does that mean. When we talk about spiritual growth, what are we saying? So most people say, I have more blessings in life, things are better in life, etc. That's not necessarily spiritual growth. You think everybody who has the physical things that we would like to have, that maybe we're feeling we don't have, you think that they've achieved it by spiritual growth? Not necessarily. Not necessarily. So you and I are here in this wisdom of Kabbalah to understand exactly what spiritual growth and how to achieve it is. So the first thing is simply to realize the Kabbalists explain to us that we've already been given everything we could ever imagine. We've been given 100% of the light and the blessing of the Creator as much as we could to our capacity in our soul. So our soul is filled then 100% 
with the potential for all forms of goodness, love, peace, prosperity, protection, every imaginable good that we think of the Creator, we've got it. So then what's missing for us and what's our spiritual growth mean? It's our, um, it's our ability or our actions to reveal that light, to reveal that blessing. Just like anyone, if you think back to your children when they're first born, do you ever see talent in them? Did you see a potential in them? Yes or yes? Yes. So what do you do? You just sit back and say, okay, let's watch it happen? No. You give them lessons, you give them schooling, you give them some form of training to take their potential from within and bring it out, to make it manifest. Why? Why not just leave it there and say, you know what? God gave them everything they need and we'll leave it that way. We have to think about that. Why not? Because potential doesn't do us much good, does it? It has to be made manifest. So spiritual growth then is the process of revealing the light of our soul so that we can feel blessed in every aspect of our life. That's really what it's about. It's no longer up to God. Once we're learning Kabbalah, we understand God's job is done. Not in disrespect, and we're not saying we don't need the power of the light, as we'll understand, but the Creator created perfection. Now it's our job to be co-creators and reveal that perfection that the Creator already sees. That's what our work is. So the first thing is simply to remember we have 100% light and the world is already filled with light. There is already heaven on earth waiting for us to reveal it. So when people talk about waiting for that day, for the final redemption and peace in heaven on earth, we're not waiting for the day. Every day could be the day if or as you and I will do our spiritual work, as we will grow. Like we say, I commit myself to greater love, kindness, and compassion. Doesn't mean I don't have it, but I want greater. How many of us feel blessed already in life in one way or another? Exactly. But do you have all the blessings the Creator gave you? No. We're still looking for the rest of it. That's where we feel lack in our life. Not because necessarily we're missing something, but because we're missing the revelation of the light. We're not drawing light through things. And that's what this, is, this morning is about. Understanding how we're going to expand our capability and our revelation of the light and those blessings that we're all looking for in life. So it's simply called appreciation. The problem with the word appreciation is it's been so overused that people don't appreciate it. They don't. You start, I mean, come on, haven't we all said somewhere along the line, or at least had the thought, they don't appreciate me enough, they don't appreciate me enough, they don't appreciate me yes. enough, yeah. right? We think that. What happens when somebody says it to us? You don't appreciate me enough. <laughs> what are you talking about? Of course I do, right? You don't appreciate me enough. Now it becomes a battle over that. No. So let's start with how we can look at appreciation. One aspect is simply counting our blessings. We hear that a lot. People say to us, you should count your blessings, count your blessings, count your blessings. And when does that usually happen? In some way or another, when a person's had some difficulty in life. Think about it. A person goes through a health challenge. Now people say, count your blessings. So what do they start to do? They start to look. The health challenge, they survive something. Wow, the sky is so amazing, the star is wonderful, the grass looks greener. Suddenly they're seeing more good in the things that's always been there. But they've always been there. They just didn't pay enough attention to it until it was almost lost. Person loses a job, and maybe now finances are difficult. So they say, count your blessings. What become the blessings now? The family and the friends, the people who are helping to support you, etc. Were they there all the time and we didn't notice? Yes, yes or yes? Yes or yes? Okay, I'm just making sure they all see out there, right? Exactly. We have to involve them in this, right? They can't be out there by themselves. So, oh, he heard them. Okay. So we all, we count our blessings, meaning look at the things we have in our life and just now acknowledge them as blessings. Because other than that, they're just scenery. So that's the first thing, just to count our blessings. Be aware of how much good we already have in our life. Now, after we're going to count our blessings, comes the next difficult level. Because we want more in life, we have to make more effort. So the Zohar and the Kabbalists teach us that the light that we feel we're missing, not that the light that is missing, 
but the light that we feel we're missing, the blessings we feel we're missing, where are they hidden? Where can any be, anything be hidden in this world? Okay, we could say inside of us, in the darkness. In the darkness. How many of you ever been to a surprise party or had one given to you? What's the matter, the rest of you? You need better friends. <laughs> So you think about it, right? There's a surprise party set up. And as usual, everybody's waiting in a room and the lights are turned off. You follow? So now comes the guest of honor with somebody who's leading them in some way or another. Are the people in the room already? Yes. Can they be seen? No, no because they're in the dark, but they already exist. So then comes the person, the guest of honor, and the lights go on out of the darkness. They see all these people suddenly created by the light bulbs. Right? Because in the dark they didn't see anybody. So it had to be the light bulbs that caused the creation of those people. So the light bulbs suddenly become the creator. No? No. So you're just going to tell me then that the people are always there. So why didn't I see them? It was dark. It was dark. So then what allowed me to see them? When I turn on the light. So then the Kabbalists, by teaching us that light can only come through darkness, added light can only come through darkness, is giving us the understanding and the motivation to delve into our darkness, delve into our challenges. One of the most powerful things we teach in Kabbalah One is to embrace our challenges. Because every challenge is simply the opportunity to reveal another level of the light of the Creator from our soul. Because where we already perceive light, there's already light. I walked into the party with these two guests, right, or the two people who were taking me, leading me there, and then all of a sudden when the light goes on, there's more guests. There's more people there. So the same thing then, as we'll walk into our challenges, as we'll embrace the things that happen to us or occur in our life, then we have the ability of revealing the light through them, drawing more blessings. But what do we have to do? What did you have to do or your friends have to do to reveal all the guests at your party? They had to inject light into the party. If they didn't inject light, what if they have this big beacon, right? It's not even going to be room lights. They're walking in where all the people are and they have one of those big spotlights. And just as about they're just ready to turn it on, and what do they do? The room this way, and they turn the light this way. And they inject the light behind them. Are you going to see all the people in the room, or is it still going to remain dark? dark? Still going to be dark. So it's not just enough to turn on the light, it also has to be directed where the darkness is. So any place in our life today that we feel we have a lack, we have something missing, that's where we have to inject the light. But it's not the easiest thing to do, is it? Because up to this point, most of us, till we really understand and embrace this concept, when there's a challenge in life, what's the first thing we tend to do? Run away. We want to run away or push away the problem. We don't want to get involved in it because why? We don't understand the light that's in there. The word appreciation itself, what does it mean? In not spiritual terms, business terms. Gain in value. So imagine, how many of you lived in Florida, I don't know what it would have to be, 20, 30 years? Anyone lived here that long? Maybe. Maybe, okay. All right. So you must remember, there was a time when some property on the coast was just empty dirt, right? And maybe it was worth $1,000, 2000 $5,000. Five years, 15 years, 20 years later, that same piece of dirt in the same place, now somebody comes along and buys it for a million dollars. What changed? Did the land itself change? No. Did the ocean change? No, it's all the same. So then what made it worth $5,000 one point, and maybe 5, 10, 20 years later, worth a million dollars? Perspective. People's perception. People's desire. The value that we put into it. Because obviously, originally, there was a certain value that we put on that land. How much? $5,000 worth. 20 years later, the same people, 
looking at the same empty piece of land in the same place, now what changed? The value we put in it. Not the value itself. What value is there objectively by itself? Dirt is dirt. Right? A piece of metal is a piece of metal. What makes silver more valuable than gold? Or the other way, sorry. Gold more valuable than silver. Platinum more valuable than that. Right? What makes all those things go up and down? If they're valuable, they're valuable. Why do they change? Don't tell me it's supply and demand either. Because I know some of you have an economic background. That you say, well, when they, when they suddenly find more of it, it's worth less. When there's less of it, it's more valuable. Why not supply and demand? Because what if everybody said, I don't care about this piece of metal. Who cares about the gold or the silver in and of itself? So supply and demand doesn't matter. It's the value we've given it. We suddenly value gold as more precious than silver. And therefore, relative to that, if there's more, then the value goes up, right? Or it goes down, and if there's less, it goes up, etc. But there's no inherent value in the gold itself, is there? As gold? No. But we're learning how to inject value. So we're coming here to understand the value of things in my life is what I give it. So before Kabbalah, what value were challenges? What value was the darkness? Zero. Let's be honest, no value. I just took it, it made me uncomfortable, difficult, etc. I want to get rid of it. Now you're learning Kabbalah, what's our value? What's our currency? Here in the center, it's about the light. The Creator didn't give us things. The Creator gave us 100% light in our soul. We come into the physical world and what happens? That light turns into physical materiality. Now we have free choice. Are we going to value the physical materiality or are we going to value the light we can bring through it? So the same thing. If we're only valuing the physical materiality, then of what value are challenges? They're not. If we value the light that's there, like our friends in that surprise party, then all we have to do is inject light into it and we can draw light from it. That's what we're learning here. It doesn't matter what happens to us, it's how we respond, how we look at it, and then how we behave. So we have to inject light. If we will give light, we'll get light. Isn't that the way appreciation goes? The guy who gave a million dollars to that piece of property, now he got more value from it. Because in his or her perspective, it was worth the energy of that million dollars. Whereas 30 years ago, it was only worth the energy of $5,000. So it changes relative to us. And don't look at your neighbor for that value. It's between me and the universe, you and the universe, each one of us. So some of you have heard the stories, but it's about people who inject light into their challenges. And I'll just give you briefly. We had a student a number of years ago, lost a job, but injected light in it, realized the light was in the business and they were channeling the light through it and just injecting kindness, love, and certainty that good would come from it. And some of you know the longer story, but this woman was saved from the Twin Towers falling because the job she lost led her to the Twin Towers. So she injected light, she saw a miracle. We have another student, a number of years back, had a health issue. So instead of feeling victimized by the health issue, just started to inject light. More light, more light, and more light, because as we're saying, as you inject light into something, what goes away? The darkness. The darkness. So what happened? The darkness went away. And then she was able to see and actually brought into her life the man who was to be her husband. So out of the darkness came light. Out of the chaos came order. That's what we have the ability to do if and when we will inject light into it. But in order to do that, we have to value the light greater than the physical materiality. And again, I'm not saying we shouldn't have a nice car and house and a good living, etc. But the question is, are we valuing the physical part as our blessing, as the source of our goodness, or are we valuing the light that comes through it, the light that I can connect as the, value, as the source of my fulfillment? Because here we're learning the light is everything. The light is the source of absolute, lasting, true fulfillment in every way, shape, or form. So if you shift then the currency from anything in the physical material to the light, what can the light become in our life? Everything. It can become anything we need in the physical world, in any time, in any moment. Our job is just to constantly be injecting light and taking away the darkness and the chaos. We spoke a couple weeks ago, I think it was. Chaos is also a perspective of mind. 
It's not about the physicality. We can have a disarray in life and it still not be chaotic. Now we have another way of understanding it. Why? Because if we inject light into what looked like chaos, into the thing that was causing us a little uh, anxiety or fear, if we inject light into it, suddenly the solution will be shown to us. We'll see the answer, we'll see the way to deal with it. And like these people, the good will come from it because we're injecting the light in it. And if we understand how big is the light, the light of the Creator, how big is it? If it's infinite, then where does it exist in our world? If it exists everywhere, why don't we see it everywhere? Now you're starting to get the idea. Because we don't see it, not because it's not there. Like that dark room with our friends in it, we don't see them, doesn't mean they're not there. So if the light is infinite, then it's important for us to hold in our mind. Consciousness is everything, and I want to see the light everywhere in my life. And that's only in my eyes. I am the vessel, I am the conduit, I am the vehicle, or if you will, the container, that can reveal light. Just to give you a little bit of science. Everyone knows what causes physical light to come out of those light bulbs? You know what a particle of light is called? Physically. A photon. A photon. But a photon is not the light. The photon is a particle that carries the light. Should I say that again? The photon is the vessel that reveals even the physical light. So when the scientists tell us the speed of light, it's not the speed of light, because if the spiritual light is everywhere, then in essence the physical light is also everywhere, because it's a representation of the spiritual light. So then when we see light versus darkness, it's because a vessel called a photon existed that causes the light to be revealed. So that vessel moves at the speed of light, and therefore we perceive the revelation of light. But the infinite light of the Creator exists everywhere. So then it's in our hands. It's in our capability to cause the revelation of that light. And it's just that shift of consciousness. Once we change our perspective about things, then it will change also. How many of you ever had a miracle in your life? All right? So we all have miracles at one point or another. Okay. A number of years ago, I'll share with you one that happened to me. That, okay. I was driving on the road and it was very, very late at night and I happened to doze off. It was one of those times. And I dozed off and I woke up just in the moment, like something shook me. Somehow I saw that there was somebody pushing a car. This is a deserted road, Northern California, at like 3 o'clock in the morning. So you don't expect anyone to be there. So I'm driving... I don't know if I should say it's being recorded. I'm driving, it's an empty road, it's a road that goes from southern to northern California, and I'm driving a little faster than the speed limit. But I'm tired and I'm trying to get somewhere, and I dozed off for a second, and I felt like a hand pushed me. And I opened my eyes, and what did I see in front of me? I saw somebody in the headlights, in my headlights, pushing a car, and they were behind the car. And I was not far from them. So I swerved like this, I swerved like this, you can imagine, like the heart beating, the car spins three or four times, doesn't roll over, right? And it stops. And all of a sudden, all I can do is look for the person who was there. Guess what? There was nobody there. Nobody there. Don't ask me what, why, or how, but to this day it still perplexes me. And all I can understand, it was a miracle. The car didn't flip over, whatever I avoided, whatever it was, a miracle. So we all have miracles like that. What the Kabbalists explained to us, we have miracles every day we don't even see. Miracles take place because of the good we do that we're not even aware of. So what do they tell us? Every day, even though our eyes don't see it, we should awaken a thankfulness. We should inject more light of gratitude for the miracles that take place that we don't see. How many of you drove from wherever you came from to here without any incident? No near accident, no nothing, right? But how many of us, as you walked in, were really thankful and appreciative for that miracle? Okay, a few, right? But the rest of us, you just walk in, you say, okay, I'm here and I'm going to, you know, participate and meet friends or whatever it was. But did you think that it could have been a miracle? Maybe 
we changed what we call our tikkun, or some people might call it karma. Maybe you did something two weeks ago, some good act of greater love, kindness, generosity, compassion, forgiveness, and tolerance, and therefore the accident that was supposed to happen was taken out of your karma, out of your destiny. So you drove from home, you drove here, and instead of having the accident, nothing happened. But we walk in unaware. So the Kabbalists are teaching us every day miracles like that happen. An illness goes away, an accident goes away, some trouble goes away, but we don't see anything different. So we don't perceive the miracle. So again, appreciation means we're injecting more light, we're injecting more value in those things. And that's what we're learning, to appreciate the miracles that we don't even see so that more miracles will happen. More light, more blessing. More injection of light, more chaos goes away, more darkness goes away, more fulfillment is revealed. More of our soul's potential. So appreciation, I hope you're getting a little different perspective on it so that it doesn't become like this. Okay, just, you know, I, I'm numb to it already. Appreciate, 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 appreciate. Because the toughest one has yet to come. Okay, just checking to see you're ready. The hardest form. Yeah, we think that's it. It's tough to appreciate light out of the darkness. No, there's one that's even more. It's not even so much that it's difficult. It's another one of those we're just not aware of that makes it really difficult. That piece of land, let's go back to that. The piece of land, was it there when it was $5,000? Yes. Was it the same piece of land? Was it there again when it was a million dollars? Yes. So it was always there. If you happen to live next door to it, let's say, so it was always there. You're looking at it, looking at it every day, every day it's there. And you see it's $5,000, and the next thing you know, boom, 20 years goes by, and you hear it was just bought for a million dollars. And what do you say? I should have bought it. Why didn't I buy it? Right? Come on. I had a friend, uh, I don't, okay. I grew up in Redondo Beach, California. In fact, somebody just Facebooked me who lives now in Redondo Beach, California. Right? It's a small town, 55,000 people in Southern California, four blocks from the beach. So I grew up in the, by the beach, and there's a city next door called Hermosa Beach. Hermosa Beach in the late 60s, 70s was just a beach town, and they had little beach cottages about 100 feet from the beach. So our family had friends that lived there. It was a little, basically one room cottage, almost like a mobile home type of thing, like $3,000. 1977 hit, and in California, the real estate market went up. This house went from like $3,000 to almost a million dollars for the same little tiny cottage. Why? Because it was about 100 or 150 feet from the beach. That was it. So what changed? Again, people's desire, people's perspective. It shifted. So then what's the greatest growth of appreciation we can gain? The things that are already in our life. Things that are already here. How many of us, when we say, I wish you would appreciate me more, what are you actually asking people to do? See more good in me. You don't see enough good in me. And I know I'm giving you more good or there is more good. See more good. That's what we're asking of them. That's what they're asking of us. So the hardest part actually is to see more light, more value, more blessing in the things we already have. But remember what it takes. It takes our injecting light into it. We have to inject light. I mean, think about it. What do you appreciate the most? The things that came to you easily, that didn't cost you much, or the things that you had to make an effort for, or that cost a lot? Where you put the most effort, whether it's metaphysical, emotions, etc., time and effort, or whether it's money, right? Why do they value this piece of lead? Put a million dollars in it, suddenly everybody's turning their head. When it's $5,000, okay, it's nice, but, right? Then you hear somebody paid $10 million for it. The house I grew up in, I don't know why we're on this thing today. The house I grew up in, we sold it in nine. Oh, God's calling, okay. <laughs> we sold it in 1977. The house I grew up in, we sold it for $125,000. Two months later, it was worth two hundred fifty. dollars Two months later, it was worth three hundred sixty. dollars 1999, it was sold by the people I who I believe still own it, for over a million and a half. Same house. Of course I look at my brother and I say, why did we sell it? We should have just held on and rented it. Right? But again, the things that are around us, 
it's our job today, and this I think is the core of what message I would like to get across today. It's up to us to inject, to see more light in the things we already have. Because as we understand the light is infinite, then even in the job we have, even if you enjoy your job, there's greater light you can get from it. Even if you have a nice family and good relations, there's still more you can get. Because I don't believe any of us are getting 100% from anything we have in life. All you have to do is look. Because we are not 100% fulfilled, there's always more to go. There's a greater awareness. There's a greater opportunity for us today as we will inject light. Don't they say you get what you pay for? What does that mean? Think about it. The value you feel of something is the amount of effort that you, can, you will pay for that thing. That's it. It's all the value that we put in our mind. I've often shared with people when we teach prosperity. If you go to, down to the mall and you've got $100 in your pocket, what's going to determine whether you buy something for that $100 or not? Desire. You walk down the mall, you see something in the window, yeah. whether I have the credit card or not. I keep my hundred, I'll use the credit card. You look in the window and you see something you like. It suddenly attracts your attention. Now, how do you determine whether you buy it or not? Are you willing to give up the hundred dollars for that thing or not? Depends on what? Your value. Your value, again, it's the same thing. It's the value we place. One person will say, here, 100 bucks, no problem, because I think it's worth $200. The other person will look at it and say, no, I only think it's worth $90. You're not getting my $100. But it's the same item. It's everybody's perspective. That's why you can't go by everyone else's perspective. Our job in life is to count our own blessings. Our job in life is to draw darkness or light through our own darkness. Our job and our work in life is to see and draw from by injecting more light into the things that are already in our life. Appreciation means the value goes up in our mind because of the light and the effort we put into it. So it could be the same old thing. You can go to work tomorrow. You can put more effort into your job. But the effort doesn't mean doing the job physically different. The added effort to draw more light and more blessing is to put more of your light work into it. Are you more conscious? which is the, the spiritual growth. Are you more conscious of injecting light as you talk to people? Are you conscious of being more cons considerate of the people around you, more aware? Does somebody have a frown on their face or do they look a little sad or are you just paying to attention to the job they do? That's the difference between you and I walking into the job one way and walking out another way. Appreciation. There's no limit to the appreciation we can have for people, places, and things around us. It's only our own limitation. So the Kabbalist teacher, if you think about it, look at Moses. I was thinking about Moses today. What kind of life did Moses live? Right? He was prince of Egypt. Right? Pharaoh's daughter took him in and he lived in luxury. But what did he feel in himself? He felt he wasn't achieving his potential. He felt there was more light. So what did he do? He went out of his comfort zone to inject more light to lead you and I out of chaos into what they call the promised land. So that's all I'm asking you to do in your level. It's all I ask myself to do in my level. In our level, we've got to be willing to go out of our comfort zone and inject light into those challenging situations, into what we would call darkness, and draw the light from it. Let's make it a surprise party. Life should be that surprise party, shouldn't it? Shouldn't we be surprised by how much good the Creator gave us? Yes? Yes, yes or yes? yes? That's it. We want to be surprised. So, all we have to do is turn on that light. It's in our hands, it's up to us to decide how much light and blessings and goodness we're going to get by just injecting it into it. So today, when we have this intersection of Passover, Easter, Right? We have all this opportunity, which is what? Renewal, freedom from bondage, overcoming chaos, etc. That's the crossroads we're at. So you and I are here in the Kabbalah Center because why? We want to draw out of everything we've ever done, everything we've ever learned, everything we experience. We want to draw the light of peace, love, and blessings. So all we have to do today, it's not so difficult in thought. The hard part is just doing the action. Do the action of injecting greater kindness, love, and compassion. Make it your commitment today, April 1st even, 
April Fool's Day. Who should we make the fool? <laughs> Think about that. Exactly. The opponent should be the fool. We should make a fool of that opponent that's telling us we're not as good as we, th as we are. We, you know, we are un incapable of doing things. That's the fool we should make. Yes, let's show the opponent that he's foolish to make us think. You and I here in the Kabbalah Center, that we're learning what we're learning. Let's make him the fool and say, no, you cannot fool me anymore. You're not going to make me believe that there's chaos that I cannot change, that there's darkness that I cannot illuminate, that there's blessings that I cannot have. Because why? The Creator gave each and every one of us more blessings than we could ever imagine. And that's why we've been blessed by so many things unexpected. Now our job is to take conscious control. Because what do we say is everything? Consciousness is everything. Today is the day. Start counting your blessings. Be determined to draw light out of all the darkness, whether it's past or present. Draw the light from it so we can overcome the chaos and we can reveal the light that the Creator put. So then it's just acting, injecting love, kindness, compassion to everyone we meet, in every situation we meet, in every way that we meet them, and including the person that you see in the mirror. Inject more light through that person also, and then we'll all reveal the peace and the heaven on earth and the love your neighbor as yourself that the Creator already put in this world, and then this will have to be the last holiday season we have, because from this point forward, it'll just be peace and harmony forever. God bless. So what we do now for those of you who are new and those of you watching online, we are a charitable organization. We do have a mission, as you all know, who have been with us. The mission is by spreading the wisdom of the Zohar and the books of Kabbalah, or the wisdom of Kabbalah and the books of the Zohar, which one simple form we can all take advantage of is this small book. Put it in your pocket, put it in your purse, put it in your suitcase, put it in your car. It brings the infinite light of the Creator. Because remember, it's the vessel that determines the revelation of light. So even though it looks like a small book, what do I always remind you? How big is an atom? A-T-O-M. Microscopic. Yet, if you remember World War II, what power does a microscopic atom have? Hiroshima and Nagasaki, right? So if microscopic things in the negative way can be powerful, what about, it's not quite microscopic, but what about small things of the light? How much light can they channel? Infinite light, and that's the idea. So what we do now is you have an opportunity of understanding your value and expressing the appreciation that you have for what we do here and what you get on Sundays and in the center in general. And so that's why we always take a moment to bless your gift and your offering so that it will not only bring you more blessing, but it also bring blessing to the world through what you're supporting, all right? Because like everything else, what we support and cause in the world comes back to us. So as we said this morning, if we're causing more light to be revealed through the challenges in our life and more light through the people that we inject, love, kindness, and compassion, then that light makes a big circle, whichever way it needs to take, and it comes back to us in the right time in the right way. So the offering that you're about to share, that we're about to give, is to support the projects of the center, the spread of the light, to bring universal peace, love, and harmony for every human being on earth forever. So we just hold the offering in your hands, just with gratitude and appreciation. We've come to understand everything in our life comes from the Creator and it comes through us. The more open we are to share from all we have, love, kindness, compassion, our time, our money, our resources, talents, and abilities, the more we share, the more it becomes revealed. The more it becomes revealed, the more it comes back to bless us and every human being on earth. And we inject that thought, that consciousness, that this gift will bring love, peace, harmony, serenity to every human being on earth. We up the value of all that the Creator's given us in our mind.
We have a greater sense of gratitude and appreciation. And a greater consciousness of the power of the light in and through us. And we share this with every person on earth to bless us and them. And we open our eyes and we say, Amen. So now, as we just mentioned the 72 names, what you see in front of you is one of the 72 names. They look like Hebrew letters. Yes, they are Hebrew letters. They are Aramaic letters. But what they really are are conduits of the light of the Creator. They literally shine the infinite light. So that combination, as you see, is counting your blessings or awakening greater appreciation. To have more value and draw more blessings out of the things we already have and out of the darkness that's in our life. So the name of the letters, just that you'll be able to understand when I mention them, Ein, Nun, Vav. From right to left, Ein, Nun, Vav. So just let your eyes look at the letters. The light shines out of them. And we want to receive the light to our soul. So just by looking at them, eyes are the window to the soul. The light will come in. It'll start to activate our soul. So just get a good look. Ein, Nun, Vav. And then if you'll close your eyes, sitting comfortably in the chair, feet flat on the floor, hands on your lap, just begin taking a few deep breaths. Breathing in through the nose, hold the breath for a moment, exhale through the mouth. Allowing yourself to relax, relax into the light force. Breathing in the light of the Creator and exhale to release all tension, any and all blockages. Begin feeling that greater awareness of the light, the infinite light all around you and the infinite light in you. Now let's draw on the power of the Ein, Nun, Vav, allowing their energies to reach into our soul, accessing a formerly hidden aspect of your soul's light. Allow that new light to be awakened. Seeing yourself shine more brightly than ever before with the light of the Creator. Let that light keep expanding, growing, till it's enveloping every human being on earth. Beginning a greater appreciation for life itself, for all the blessings in our life, allowing Ein Nun Vav to help us raise our consciousness, to be able to draw more light, to have more value of the light in everything in our life and every person.
And as we're sharing this light and awakening the soul of every person on earth, they also awaken to count their blessings, to know that they can draw light through whatever challenges are facing them by injecting love, kindness, and compassion. Ein Nun Vav. Let it be imprinted in your consciousness from this moment forward. Greater and greater appreciation, more and more value, light and blessings. Let's envision together the whole world at its 100%. A world at peace and harmony and unity. Taking one more deep breath, anchoring it in our heart and soul, and slowly open your eyes as you exhale. <laughs>